If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Our first step is to draw a free body diagram of this bundle. We can represent the bundle as a point, and what we want to do is draw the forces that are acting on the bundle. Now we have a downward force of gravity acting on the bundle, and we can call that downward force the weight. But then we also have an upward force of tension that is present because of the rope that's attached to the bundle and that is pulling up on it. And we can label that force the tension, or T. These are the only two forces acting on the bundle. Notice that one of the forces points up, and so it would have a positive value. The other force is pointing down in the negative direction, so it'll actually be negative W for its value. We know that the sum of the forces is going to equal the mass of the bundle times its acceleration. And so what we'll do is add together the two forces. We have the positive force that we marked T, and then we're going to add a negative W force. So we're basically subtracting W, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now the question never gave us the mass of the bundle. It only gave us its weight. But we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity. And so we can actually solve this equation for the mass by dividing both sides by G. The G's will cancel out on the right side. So we can see that the mass is actually W divided by G. So we're going to actually substitute W divided by G in for the mass in our equation. The question is asking us for the acceleration, so we want to solve this for A. And one way to do that would be to multiply every term by G so that it cancels out right here. That'll put a G here as well as a G there. And then we could divide both sides by the weight so that on the right hand side the weights will cancel. And so at this point we could plug in the known values. We know that the tension T has a maximum value of 387. The weight was 449. G is 9.8, so we can just plug those values in. And when you crunch that down, you should get an acceleration of negative 1.35, and the unit of acceleration will be meters per second squared. Now, we'll notice that the question just wants the magnitude. Magnitude means that we need to report the answer as a positive value. So we're basically just going to take the absolute value of both sides of this equation, and that'll change the negative 1.35 into a positive 1.35 meters per second squared. So the magnitude of the acceleration is this right here. In part B, using that acceleration, we need to calculate the speed that the bundle will have when it hits the ground. And to do that, we need to turn to the equations of kinematics. Now, one of the equations from kinematics tells us that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement that the object is undergoing. Now, the question didn't actually state the value for the initial velocity, but we can assume that it is equal to 0. And so that's going to knock that term out. If we square root both sides of this equation, we can see that the final velocity will be the square root of 2 times the acceleration times the displacement. Now just be careful, when you use this equation, you have to use the actual value of the acceleration, the negative 1.35, not the magnitude. So we would plug in the negative 1.35 for the acceleration, and now the displacement, which we've symbolized by delta y, that's basically going to be 6.1 meters, but we have to be careful because if we consider the diagram of this little bundle right here, and maybe it starts at a height of 6.1 meters. But the point is that from where it starts, as it lowers, it's moving in a downward direction. That actually means the displacement is negative 6.1 meters, because overall it's moving downward from its initial position. So we'll plug in negative 6.1 here. We'll pick up our calculators. And when we crunch this down, we get 4.1 meters per second. Now technically, because this is a velocity and the bundle is moving downward, it actually will be negative 4.1 meters per second. But the question is asking for speed, and speed doesn't have a direction to it. So we cannot indicate the negative sign when we're reporting speed, because that negative sign tells us a direction. And we do not want to report a direction with speed. We just want to report basically the magnitude. So the correct answer for the speed is 4.1 meters per second.